Is okay. All right. Is there a s second for that? Second. Well, <laughs> um, is there any uh, anyone who wishes to speak against that change? Is there an objection to changing that one word? Seeing none, we're going to just change that one word to after. And now I believe I'm going to put the question to the floor on the amendment by substitution, unless there's an objection. Seeing none, we're going to vote on the amendment by substitution. That, that this is going to be a 50, a majority vote, and it is going, so the amendment is to leave part one, part two, and part four, and change part three as listed on the screen currently. All those in favor, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The ayes have it, the motion is amended. That kills that six minutes of the report there. We now have 10 minutes on the underlying motion for best series. Mr. Buff, as the maker of the original motion, would you like to speak in favor? Yes, uh, first I'd like to commend Mr. Harris and his committee for actually improving the text that we had been over so many times. I, I thought that uh, we'd done a pretty good job, especially with, with Mark challenging us on things, but you have managed to find an even better way. Uh, so a, as I was saying before, this is an attempt very similar in my mind to the attempt to bring in a YA award to bring our awards in line with the state of publishing as it's been over the past couple of decades. Uh, we have, in, in my opinion, the, the best compromise that we can get between un the understanding of, okay, a work can only be eligible once, and well, when it's extended, we'd like to treat it as a new work since we're creating category for something that sometimes by definition is never completed. You know, some series are designed to be in interminable. <laughs> some are designed to be unreadable. <laughs> and succeed. <laughs> Considering them, really we have to consider the work as it stands. So, I believe that this accomplishes that. Now, uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not a big series reader. My brother is. We have very different reading tastes. But I think the publishing industry has come to believe that my brother is where the money is. And I'm not. <laughs> and I think that passing this will help improve the best novel category as well as recognizing work in the current state of the art. So I, I encourage you to pass this and if anyone else wants to yield their time to ask me a question they can but I'm not going to yield my time to take them <laughs> is there anyone who wishes to speak against the motion I actually have a point of information from someone on the committee name John Dawson Rachel, Rachel. Oh, thank you this is speak, speak your name into the microphone for hi everyone I'm John Dawson um, I have a point of information that is essentially restating Mr. Rose's question from earlier um, for someone on the committee. Uh, as I read this, it doesn't clearly explain what would happen in the event of an author writing multiple series who wins one. Would they still be eligible for the second series? Um, just I'm going to count that as a speech against since Mr. Buff said he was not yielding for questions. Um, yes, multiple series from the same author would be eligible, provided they're not the same series, really. Uh, unfortunately, he did answer the question after I said, so I'm going to count that as a question, unless the timekeeper is going to kill me for that. <laughs> All right, so now speech against Miss Secor. Hi, everybody. I'm still Kate Secor. I have really serious concerns about this. I, I think that there is, the real eligibility will create frequent flyers. Um, you know every time George R. R. Martin puts out his 300,000 word work, you know, 
I know it says two books, but eventually they're going to start splitting them so that he can become re-eligible. We're going to see people like Sean McGuire, who I love beyond all words, but publishes a book a year, will be on it every two years. She, she's on it every year now. Like, we know that there are going to be frequent flyers, no matter how much we love them. I'm not convinced that that's super great for the category. I also think that this puts a somewhat of an intolerable burden on Hugo voters who actually want to vote in an informed manner, where it's, oh, here's a series I haven't re read, and they are eligible for books 11 and 12. Great. There goes all my reading time for the year. So I just, I'm, while I agree that the state of publishing has changed, I'm not convinced that this is a super awesome Hugo category. Uh, is it, are you rising for a speech in favor? All right, I'm gonna recognize you, but I would like to make an announcement that you cannot gain recognition while a speaker is currently speaking, so please don't stand or raise your hands while somebody is speaking. Just wait till they're done. I am trying to scan the room as best I can. I know I suck at looking at the wings, but please don't raise your hands while people are speaking. Yes, Dr. Adams. Still, 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 Andrew Adams. Um, uh, except, of course, if you're wishing to rise to ask the speaker a question. Yes. But then please note that you are asking the speaker a question because I'm going to assume that you're trying to gain recognition and I can't tell the difference unless you say something. PRK, you are recognized as a speech in favor. Hi, my name is PRK. Um, I was one of the jurors in the inaugural Sarah Douglas Award uh, in Australia that recognized series. We had a similar issue where series were not recognized by our awards. Uh, there's one different in structure, is that the series had to have been considered finished before it was eligible, and then if there were further works, it could then be eligible as a new series. The second point I wanted to raise is in the finalists of the about 16 or 17 books in five series in the finalists. Only one had previously been nominated as a best novel uh, and made the finalist list. And the author whose series won had never uh, uh, won as an individual best novel. So this best series award actually demonstrated a significant difference between best novel and best series uh, that was recognized within Australia. Is it for a speech against? Uh, I'll take your honor, but you don't need to comment. <laughs> Do you, you, have, you have a point of info? Yeah, come to the microphone. And give, it, and give us your name. Yes, and please state your name. <laughs> My name is uh, Bolina Thomas Shop. Actually, it's Joe Van Eckren. Um, uh, my question is how you're going to distinguish series because you've got people like C.J. Cherry and uh, okay, C.J. Cherry and uh, uh, Terry Pratchett who have series with subseries and how do you define whether their individual series are all one series because they're in one universe? Can I get your name? Rules, uh, should be section three point two, but I don't really want. What's your name? Okay. Okay. I'm going to, if, is there anyone on the committee who would like to answer that question? Yeah. Mr. Garrard. I'm going to, yeah. Still Chris Garrard, the answer to the question is, you all get to figure that out. <laughs> if it's got enough, like we move it round and round and round in that issue. If it's got enough votes, it'll be on the ballot. If it doesn't. It won't, and if you, you know, you know if, the, if the Hugo Committee really wants to have, you know, Eric Flint on there for every year, then he's going to be on there every year. I, okay, no, we believe we're at speech against. Okay. Ari Goldstein, um, I thought I was clear on this, and now I'm not. I just want to make sure. The way it works is that if a work loses, I was on the ballot and then loses, what I understand is the author has to actually write something else. They have to write more works to actually get back on the ballot. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. All right. Now a speech against Mr. Walling. <laughs> 